Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. Windows XP is a very desirable OS for mid-2000s gaming. However, it's become a bit harder to activate now that it's end of life. So today I will be showing you exactly how to activate it in 2022. But before you can get it activated, you need to install it. And all you need for that is a computer, peripherals, Windows XP disk. There are many ways to obtain these. Uh, you can get ISOs from online, you can burn them to USB sticks, but I found the easiest way is a genuine install CD. You'll need a product key to activate it. Easiest way to obtain one is to buy a system that has a label on the case, or to buy a disk that has it in the package. And then, finally, you'll need your drivers. It's easiest to consolidate a lot of .exes onto a USB stick, but if you've got some on CD, that's totally fine. First step, turn on your monitor, turn on your computer, open the disk tray. If it gets stuck, Put your disk in, close the tray. Most computers have F9 as the key to get into the boot menu, so press that repeatedly on startup, and it should try and boot from the DVD, or CD, sorry. Here we go. You can hear the disk drive ramping up. Press any key to boot from the CD, and it starts booting into the setup program. So you can pretty much just sit back and relax. It'll take about 5 to 10 minutes to get through this phase. Alright. So it's finished loading the drivers from the Windows XP CD. This is basic things like drive controllers that it needs to install the OS. So it gets to this phase, it says setup is starting Windows and it'll bring you into a thing soon that lets you select which drive you want to install to. Now it can take about a minute where it just says setup, setup is starting Windows before it gets to that section, so just be patient and wait for that. Okay, now you get to this screen, uh, the main setup screen. So you press enter to install it to a new drive, F8 because I agree, and then Delete all of the partitions of your drive that you don't need. Then press C to create a new partition. Okay, then you go format the partition using the NTFS file system quick. Even though it's just an 80 gigabyte drive, a full format can still take quite a while, as in over an hour, depending on the speed of your drive. And then it checks the disk, and then it starts copying your files over. Okay, so copying your files will finish up after about five minutes or so. Then it loads the main installer. Then your computer restarts. Now, when the boot from CD DVD prompt comes up, don't boot from it. However, don't remove the disk from the drive because it will be needed later in the setup. So just wait a while, and then it'll boot straight from the first drive. 
However, if you take the disk out, it still needs to copy a couple setup files, such as product keys, that sort of thing, so you won't be able to complete setup without the disk still in. So as I was saying, it boots into the main installer now, and you might want to grab a seat and a cup of coffee because this takes a little while. Here we go. We are into the setup. Still has a little bit of loading to do. And this is where it really finishes up copying the files, and this is where you put in your user account information and that sort of thing. It's also where you put in your product key later. You might hear your drive spin up and down a couple times, and you might hear your hard drive spin up and down a couple times during this process. That's normal, that happens. Alright, about 10 minutes later, we're to the part where you start needing to put details in. So, here's your region and language, which the default is fine for me. And then here is where you need to enter your product key. That's where this comes in. So I'm going to peel off this tape that I just had to, you know, cover it from view. Okay, so once you've got your product key all entered, I don't want that name, so I will name it, I'll name it P4HT for its hyper-threaded Pentium 4, and then I'll just enter a password. Then here's where you enter your time zone information. And there's a lot to choose from. Quite a lot. But it just so happens that this one is correct. And then it goes back to the just installing things phase, so you can pretty much just walk away for this. Okay, you might be able to hear, this is where our DVD drive gets used again. You can hear it loading files, spinning up the disk a bit, and from the sound of it, it's not doing large sustained transfers, it's seeking for small individual files and then copying those over to the hard drive. Alright, once that's finished, again your computer will reboot. Again, let it skip this. Don't take the CD out, but also don't boot from it. It is needed later in the setup. At this point, it will boot into the Windows XP desktop, and then this is really the final settings configuration step. At this point, it goes into the tour. There's like a skip thing where you can... Uh, automatic updates, don't turn those on. Then you input your username. There we go, that's it. So at this point, you're going to need your drivers. You're also going to need your product key because in most cases you will have to type that in again once the setup is finished. And at this point, once it gets to the desktop, you can go ahead and take this disk out. While the tray's open, I'll stick in my Wi-Fi card driver disk. I'll also plug in my USB driver drive. 
Now what I said about the product key, you don't always need to type it back in, but in some cases you do. Now if you're using an NVIDIA or ATI card, uh, it's going to be really laggy and very glitchy before you install the drivers. However, once you do get the drivers installed, that will be resolved. So here is motherboard chipset driver, NVIDIA driver, and sound driver. I'm going to copy these all to the desktop, then I can pull that drive out and start installing these drivers. Okay, yeah, when it says 30 days left for activation, this is when you need your product key again. Okay, yes, I want to telephone a service representative to activate Windows. I'll go ahead and start these driver installations. Okay, so you select your location. I am in the US, United States. It provides you with a phone number. So I'm going to call that right now. It's best to do this on a smartphone. And I'll put it on speaker so that we can hear. Welcome to Microsoft Product Activation Center. Pour continuer en français, appuyez sur le 2. To help us improve the quality of our products, services, and training, this call may be recorded or monitored, and information collected on this call may be accessed by Microsoft affiliates, subsidiaries, and service providers internationally. To consent to recording or monitoring of this call, press 1. Or to continue without recording or monitoring, press 2. Thank you. This call will not be recorded or monitored. For security purposes, please enter the following number on your phone's touchtone pad. 5 6 7 That number will be different for every call. Thank you. Welcome to Microsoft Product Activation. Now, which kind of product would you like to activate? Please say... Windows. Office. Windows. Or say... Okay, Windows. Are you at your computer with the activation screen open? Please say yes or no. Yes. To reduce your effort, we can activate your product using your smartphone's display instead of our audio self-help system. To get started, I'll need to send a text message to your smartphone. Carrier text and data rates may apply. First, are you calling from a smartphone? Yes. Good. Should I send you that text message? Yes. Great. I've sent you a text message. Okay, that's the easiest way to do it, and you can hang up once it has sent you the message. So it gives you a unique link over which you can activate. So let's see, how many digits? We have six per thing. Six digits. And then here's the tricky part, you have to enter this number here. So. I will enter that now. Okay, so once you enter that number, click Submit. Okay, watch me get it right first try. I did. Okay, I'm going to blur this part of the screen even though it's probably hard to see anyway. Uh, it's because this could be used to activate Windows XP with my key and I don't want that happening. So it gives you a confirmation ID so you have to type this in on, on your computer. So once you have typed that in, click the no on did you get an error message. It says great, your product has been successfully activated. You don't need the phone anymore. And your Windows has successfully been activated. And at this point, you can finish up installing your drivers, which is what I'm going to do right now. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope this helped, and see you next video.